Yesterday, Apple announced their lossless version of Apple Music coming next month at no extra charge for subscribers. But who actually gets to use it and what do you need to make the most of it? This video is supported by NordPass, letting you store all of your passwords in one place. Organize your logins and private notes in a secure password vault and access it all with a single master password. And with NordPass's data breach scanner, you can find out if your online account or credit card information has been leaked. Right now, NordPass has their spring forward sale too until June the 1st, 2021. So my audience can get 70% off NordPass at nordpass.com forward slash iCave or use the code iCave plus, you'll get an additional month of NordPass for free. Thank you to NordPass for sponsoring this video. I'm Mike Ev, Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so that you do not miss a thing. Plus, if you have questions that you want me to answer about anything Apple, use the comment section down below with hashtag iCaveAnswers. But yes, lossless Apple Music came yesterday, or at least was announced yesterday, it'll be coming next month for everyone to start using and it doesn't cost any extra if you already subscribe to Apple Music. It also adds spatial audio, which in this case essentially adds virtual Dolby surround sound around your head based on different frequencies from the speakers. Of course, not everything supports everything and it's not super easy to understand how the tiers work. Now these are quality tiers, not price tiers, because you get all of the options in the base package but you won't be able to use it all unless you have certain things, so let's get into it. So your iPhone, your iPad, and your Mac can do high-res lossless, and for any of the audio files out there, that's all the way up to 24-bit, 192 kilohertz audio, which I'm sure means something to you. For that, though, you will need wired headphones and a DAC, which is a digital-to-analog converter. And if you're the kind of person that has one, you will already know that. However, not or wired headphones, but iPhones, iPads, and Macs, at least the latest versions, will also offer spatial audio through their own internal speakers. That's right, you'll be able to have spatial audio playing out of the two ends of your iPhone 12, your new iMac, which we, we knew we, we knew that this was going to come, that's what I was telling you yesterday, and also from your iPad. So that's going to be an interesting thing to test, how that kind of fills the room in the way that an old HomePod used to. But then as we start to kind of go down the list of Apple products, we start to get some crosses in some of these columns. So basically everything else from Apple, the AirPods Max, AirPods Pro, regular AirPods, Beats with H1 or W1 inside, can all do spatial audio. And yes, that does include the regular AirPods that weren't capable of spatial audio for video because it doesn't have to head track for this. But sadly, even with the $35 lightning cable attached, AirPods Max will not be doing that high-res lossless audio either, which seems something of a waste. Now, we can only hope that this could be addressed in the future and perhaps Apple could make a, a custom DAC for these, but it doesn't seem like that's what Apple has in the works at this point. Although, we obviously have WWDC on the way and maybe they have some absolute magic up their sleeves. Let me know in the comments how annoyed you are about this. I've got to say, I am always on Apple's side with pretty much everything. I always try to see the good in why they do things and why they don't. But I really don't understand when they obviously knew that this Apple Hi-Fi was going to be on the way. Why did they not create a way for it to work with AirPods Max? It just doesn't seem to make any sense to me at all that they would kind of release these high-end headphones $550, that's not a cheap product, and then not allow it to work with them even via a cable. It just doesn't doesn't sit right. In other small bite-sized bits of news, Apple has released new special edition Apple Watch Pride edition bands, a braided solo loop, and a Nike Sport loop, both of which will be available from May the 25th, along with new faces designed to represent the additional Pride flags from across the LGBTQ plus spectrum. The braided loop is $99 and the sports loop is $49. And I just want to be crystal clear here, this is not me being political, this is me reporting on a new Apple product, but I know there will be comments below about it. And just to be even clearer, I think this kind of product is great and I'll talk about whatever I decide to on my channel. If you don't like it, sorry, but it's not going to change and if you don't want to watch my videos anymore, you know, bye. Next up, Notification Squad, these are the big fans of the channel who want to know when we have something drop and want to know about it straight away. So, new to the channel are 
Techable Tech, and K12 Bino. Thank you so much for joining. And if you want to join my notification squad too, and uh, you're not going to get horribly offended about me mentioning new Apple products, all you need to do, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell. Ring it hard. Then you just need to let me know down in the comments with hashtag notification squad so I can give you a shout out. However, I'm not going to keep shouting out randomly named keyboard taps that have just been named to make me say stupid stuff. Yes, I've brought the sass today. Next, I cave answers. Let's go. A huge four hours ago, I cave answers. None of the leakers have said anything about the true we are going to see in the upcoming Mac, Book Pro 14 inches and 16 inches. Although you briefly touched on this a couple of weeks ago, will we see the current Radeon Pro GPUs carried over? Or a new Apple Silicon G1? Or something else? Could we see the M1 chip paired with the true as well as? Or even instead of? The M1X that we all expect to see debut? Okay, uh, I think we are actually going to see something very different to what you think. I don't think we're getting a, d a discrete GPU. I think we're going to get the M1X, which is going to be a system on a chip, and that GPU is going to be a part of it. I don't think it's going to be a separate uh, discrete GPU. I 100% am convinced that there will not be an AMD GPU in there. That just ain't going to happen. Apple will have their own GPU built in, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be part of the system on a chip. don't think it's going to be discrete, and I don't think that matters. I actually think having the integrated GPU is going to be faster than having a dedicated GPU, because that would mean having a separate memory pool, and all that sort of stuff, which actually slows the system down. So yeah, that's what I think we're going to see. I think it's going to be a 16 core GPU and that's it, but it's going to be part of that SOC. Does that mean that it will perform worse than a dedicated GPU? I don't think it does and I don't see why it would. But if someone can explain to me why a dedicated GPU is inherently better than an integrated GPU, other than heat management, which we already know the Apple Silicon is very, very good at. Please let me know down in the comments where I'm going wrong here. Thank you so much for watching. I know it's a short show today. That's because um, pretty much all there was was the, uh, the audio stuff that we've already talked about. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in tomorrow's show.